All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I've been going over some code for our textbook, and remember again that textbook, Visual C Sharp 2015, an introduction to object-oriented programming by Joyce Farrell. Not the 2017 version, but the 2015. All right, and I'm just going to copy this comment, and I'm going to paste it into the program that we were just working on, which is right here. All right, this is a simple C Sharp GUI program. All right. So we came in here, and as I mentioned, we no longer need the using static system.console because we're not using any right lines in here. Had we added a right line, which we could do, we'd need that. All right. So we come in here, and we wanted to do the stuff. Let's, let's do it in the order we put it in. When we click the clear button, what we wanted to have happen was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 different fields we wanted to clear. Clearing the first name, clearing the middle initial, clearing the last name, clearing the employee number, clearing the years union, the hours work, the hourly rate, and the gross pay. So all 8 of those are now clearing. Again, I'm just a little anal here, but you don't have to do this. The other thing that we wanted to do was we wanted the cursor to go back to the first field, which was the first name. So again, you saw that when we put stuff in here, now notice I can't put anything in here now anymore because that's a read-only field. But I can put stuff in here. Now if I do put in a value for hours worked and for hourly rate, oops, and for hourly rate, and click calculate, all right, Oh, that's because I foolishly didn't put a number in there for the employee number, but that's on me. Let's run it again. Okay, first name, middle initial, oh, middle initial last name, employee number, which I sh that field should be bigger. It's cutting off the number part. True. So notice that works. When I click clear, everything clears, and there's my cursor. All right, just as we mentioned. All right. I converted all of these over because this is going to guarantee that what I put into this field is numeric. This is going to ver verify that or guarantee that what I put into this field is a Boolean, true or false, and these will verify that they're numbers. I would break the program now if I put in anything that was out of whack. In other words, if I put a non-numeric value into the, one of the ones that's in blue there, or for the uh, emp number, or if I put something other than true or false in the is union. I'm not going to do that now. All right. These are called local variables because they're created inside of this particular method. That's the only place they're needed. All right. Here's, we already looked at this, and this was a code. In just a minute, we're going to go into an if statement, but this says if We've got this message box, and if we click the button that says yes, it's a yes-no button, then exit the program. Otherwise, do nothing. So keep running the program. All right? So what you see when you look at this, you've got more using statements in here, and one of the ones that we definitely need is this using system.windows.forms. All right, that allows us to do our form stuff. All right? The comments weren't that different. As far as this stuff, the partial class and, and this, we're going to get into that, but not until later on in the book. This says we've got a, a control that's called button calculate. And if you remember, if I highlight this button, there it is, button calculate. This one is button clear. This one is button exit. All right, so this says that when I click the Calculate button, this is the code that should run. Now, this says Object Sender. That's who clicked the button. It's just basically it's going to be you, the user. Excuse me, you, the user. And these are event arcs, which we're not going to worry about till later on in the class. So this represents the text box that has the employee number. This represents the text box that has the union status. This represents the text box with the hours. This represents the text box with the 
hourly rate. And this represents the text box with the gross pay. Always helps to come up with names that are reflective of what you're trying to do, the right variable type, and then even you know, give them an initial value and give them a comment so that anybody can look at this program and ideally at least figure out what's going on. All right. Then since these are either, these are non-text fields, these are non-strings. So I'm going to manually convert those. And this is doing some, what we're going to call this for lack of better words, we get into it in later chapters, but minimal form validation right there. All right, so that's what we're doing there. And then here, we're going to calculate the gross pay. Now, we're not worried about, <clears throat> uh, about things like uh, overtime, etc. We're going to bring that in in just a couple minutes. All right. And this, let's say set gross pay. set the gross pay value for the text box. Maybe not a great comment, but it works. All right, this will clear out those boxes. And in fact, let's do this. All right. This will set the focus to the first field. And as it says, clicking this button will run the program if the chooser, user chooses to do so. So here, user clicked the yes button. And here, since they're not doing anything, I mean, it's a little weird to put a comment there, but user clicked the no button. All right, so what I've tried to do so far is I've gone over now four different examples. The first example was hard coded, a hard coded console example where I put in my first name, my last name, and my hours worked and my hourly rate and figured out my gross pay. But every time we ran it, it would look just like that. In the second example, we set it up so that you were able to read in values for the first name, last name, hours worked, and hourly rate. Then in the third example, which was another console program, we added some more stuff. We added constants. We didn't use them, but we added them. All right, in fact, I really should go back here just for completeness and grab these constants and put them in my program here. I'm not using them yet, but it's okay. I think I can put those up here, I believe, right there. I don't think I'll get any error message. All right. So when I come back, I'm done lecturing for today, but when I come back, I'm going to do a, a few more programs. All right, I'm going to do a program that's going to have an if statement in there that's going to basically figure out, you know, how do we want to handle this if the user has worked overtime? All right, so we want to handle that, so we will. All right, and we will give them time and a half fact, now that I look at that, there's really one more thing that we're going to want to add for the next one. Max not OT, but we're also one going to add in here const double OT rate equal 1.5, and that will be our overtime rate, time and a half. Pretty much standard, right? I think so at least. All right. So I think we're making good progress here. So again, I'm going to grab all of this code that I have here, copy it to the clipboard, and as I did before, now I don't need this one, so 
paste that in. All right, so when I come back, we're going to go into chapter four and chapter four in our textbook. So we just went through this stuff in chapter three. Still haven't really had many errors, but believe me, we'll get plenty as we go on. But I did show you creating form. I showed you the toolbox and some of the tools. We use labels, we use text boxes, we name different things. As far as deciding which interface to use, well, that's something you're going to have to start doing. All right. In other words, you're going to have to start thinking, which is better? I like a graphical program. I think it's easier for anyone to look at and use. Not everyone agrees with that. When we come back in a couple minutes, we're going to go over selection. So far, our programs have been almost, except for clicking that uh, exit button, they've been totally sequential, one line after the other. So in the next chapter, we'll understand logic, planning tools, and decision-making. We'll learn how to make decisions using either if or if-else statements. We'll talk about compound if statements. We may or may not put in a switch statement. We'll use the conditional operator, also known as the ternary operator, also known as the question mark colon operator. We'll talk about the not operator. In fact, we'll talk about the not operator, the and operator, and the or operator. We'll talk about some of the common errors you make when you write decisions making programs with ifs, if else, nested ifs, etc., and switch statements. And finally, we'll learn about some of these issues and how they affect GUI programs. Probably what I'm going to do is to go back and rewrite this program again twice. I'll write it first as a console program and then write it again as a GUI program. Then we'll do that also for Chapter 5 where we'll talk about different things with uh, loops. I've already done those, so I'm going to look at my programs. And then um, hopefully all the rest of them will be done. So I'll be back to talk about some of that stuff very shortly.